Hi, I'm Will from Unleashed, and in this video we're going to look at inventory and products within Unleashed. So what I'm going to do is take you through our product database, I'm going to click into a specific product, and I'll take you through the fields that are available, and I also want to talk about batch and serial tracking at the end of this video as well. So let's jump in, and we'll check it out together. Right, so here we are in our products database, and you can see on this uh, home page here, you can see the product code, the product description, the product group it falls into, what pack they arrive in, how many are allocated to orders or production, how many we have on hand, the units we measure it in, and we also have an action cog here to go and uh, complete certain actions. Now just a bit of a tip here as well, if you go show toolbar, we can also click on hidden columns here, and you can also include a bunch of other information on each of these products. So for example, the supplier name, I can pull that and I can drop it into the page here, just like this. And now we can see the default supplier for each of these products, just like that. So that's a really cool tip there, is using the hidden columns. So the product I want to focus on here, I'm just going to search for it up here, and it's if I type in 40, it's the 40 kilogram bag of Easy Mix Cement, which are the supplier, or the default supplier, was Troy's Trade Center. So I'm just going to talk you through a few of these fields here. I'm not going to go through every single one, but just to give you a bit of an overview of what's in this product. So we've got the product code, and that product code is the a unique identifier for the product. So it's used in a number of places, it's just to make sure that we don't have any duplicate products in the system. Now the product description is usually what is being shown on our invoices and on our purchase orders. So you might want to have a product code and a product description. A product code could also be what the product code is from your supplier. So when you buy it in, you can put your the supplier's product code in there. You may have your own product code and you do have the option of putting your supplier's product codes into the product as well, which allows for easy purchase orders if you do use multiple suppliers. I'm gonna show you that in a moment. If the product is a barcode, you can put it in there. The unit of measure is, for example, uh, each liters, meters, so however you uh, purchase and sell that product is the unit of measure you'd choose. So for example, this would be each. The product groups, so you can set up a whole lot of product groups here and uh, these are done in your settings. And the reason we might wanna set up product groups is if we want to run sales reports or margin reports based on a product group. So you may be breaking them out by brand or you may break them out on the type of product uh, that you're selling. So product groups are very useful for your reporting. Uh, your sales and cost of sales accounts. This is for your mappings to your accounting system. So when you sell, where would you like that revenue to go? And when you uh, sell as well, when we recognize the cost of the sales, where would you like that cost of sales to go to? And these accounts are going to be pulling from your accounting system. Uh, you've also got your default label template. So when you're printing out labels uh, or printing out uh, any uh, sales or purchase orders, what do you want to be using? So you've got, uh, this is a whole other part of the system here. As I said, I don't want to go, I'm not going to go through every single item here, but this is for your labels. Uh, attributes, you can tag uh, attributes to a product. So if we were to choose color, it'll give us an option to put a color in here. So you can put different attributes uh, into products as well. Just like that, so I'm gonna put no attributes here. And then dimensions. Dimensions are great to set up if uh, you have all that information. This is useful for when you're doing a purchase order, if you put in the uh, sizes and the weights. When you do a purchase order, you can see what the total dimensions are. That's really good if you're selling something like shoes. You might wanna know how big a shoe box is, so you know how many shoes you can fit in a pallet when you're shipping them uh, across the water. So that's uh, something that's used for people that are importing and wanting to know exactly how they can stack their uh, container up to the, uh, the top. Uh, but not used for uh, people that are not sort of really importing and uh, exporting. You can put notes on a product. Now uh, what I'll also do is I'm going to talk you through this information down here. Now type. Now never diminishing, that means that if that is turned on, it means that we don't track stock for this product. So that could be for things like any miscellaneous, so if you're selling like nuts and bolts or anything uh, that we don't want to track our inventory on, you can make it never diminishing. Assemble product, so if this is a product that's going to be used in assembly, we'd turn that on. Now if it's, so if it is a product that we assemble, we'd turn that on. And if this is a component product, we would turn that on. So uh, component products turn into assembled products. So for example, if we're, uh, if we're manufacturing beer, you might want to have sugar would be a component, and then the uh, six pack of lagers would be your assembled product. So you, you turn these off or on depending on where they sit in the assembly process. Obsolete is essentially a deleted product, so uh, rather than deleting a product, you can also mark it as obsolete. If you do have sales and purchase information on a product, you are unable to delete it, so you'd mark it as obsolete, so it wouldn't show up uh, in the pages when you're creating purchase orders or sales invoices. 
Now, serialized and batch tracked, these are really interesting fields. Now, if we choose serialized, if we order 10 products from a supplier and we say they're serialized, that means we're gonna to have to click into each of these products and allocate a serial number, and then we sell that product, would also allocate it or would select the appropriate serial number. So that's when we're buying and selling stock. That means every single product for this particular product would be uh, have a serial number. So that's things like if you're selling phones, maybe selling dishwashers or fridges, you may want to be tracking those serial numbers so you can make sure uh, of each unit you have on hand. Batch tracked. So batch tracked is more of a watered down version of serialized. What you'd be doing is tracking batches. So let's say we are assembling beer. You may have a batch of beer. So if you do have, let's say, some bad yeast that went into a batch, if you're batch tracking that product, you know that that batch used this type, this batch of yeast. Therefore, all of those beers that you've then sent out to your customers need to be recalled. That's where batch tracking is really powerful because you can track exactly where each product has gone once it's been assembled. And when you're selling, you'd select which product from the batch. So you might have a batch from August and a batch from September. When we're selling, you may want to be selling your August batch before you sell your September batch. So this product here, our 40 kilo bag of Easy Mix Cement, we're really not interested in serializing. We don't care which bag we sell. And again, with our batches, we're not really interested because the products are consistent every time around. So we'd have both of those off. Sellable is a great field as well. There are certain products that we don't sell. For example, if you're a brewery, you may have sugar and yeast and hops. You don't actually sell those products. You sell your final products, which are your six packs and your 12 packs of beer. So for your component products, you'd you'd uncheck them as sellable. That means when you're doing a sales order, you're not gonna start seeing things like your sugars and your yeast and your hops showing up uh, when you're trying to create sales orders for customers. And it just creates less clutter in that, uh, in that sales screen. We've also got some, uh, up here we've got some uh, quick um, numbers. So that's how much stock on hand we have. So we've currently have 151 units on hand. Uh, none have actually been allocated to sales orders or into assemblies. Well, we're not assembling this product, but if we do have these allocated to assemblies, uh, it will be showing in here as well. That's the available quantity we have. So that would be your stock on hand less the allocated, gives you available. Then you see how many are sit currently sitting on purchase orders. So we've got 67 currently sitting on purchase orders. And this is our stock value in our default currency. So this is a New Zealand dollar currency unleashed. So we have 2,124.60 of stock on hand for this product. So that's in the details screen. Uh, if you go to inventory, you can see uh, our different warehouses and how much stock on hand we have in each of our warehouses, and also the minimum stock level we want to carry for each of our warehouses. And you can see if you've got low stock alerts in here as well. Uh, you can see SES distributors. We have 131 units on hand. Uh, we've got 67 on purchase. 30 is our minimum stocks. We've got no alert sitting here for this warehouse. Uh, purchase is where we can put in our default purchase price. We can also put in our uh, suppliers, uh, like you would have seen in a previous video here. We've got uh, Troy's Trade Center and International Supplier. Those are the two suppliers that we order our products from, and we can put uh, special, we can put uh, pricing based on each of those suppliers. So if we order from any other supplier, it'll be $11.50. If we order for Troy's Trade Center, it'll be $9.50 NZD. An international supplier will be $3.50 uh, USD, but we have to order a minimum of 100 units when we place an order with an international supplier. So you can set this up in here. Uh, moving through, we've got sales. So you can see our default sales price. And you also have different tiered pricing. So uh, each customer will be allocated a price tier and that's gonna define the price that they receive, uh, that they buy that product at. We also have the ability to do quantity-based pricing. So if a customer or perhaps anyone orders, you can get very clever here around uh, if you have price breaks for certain customers or you can have price breaks for everyone. So it's, it's very, very clever here. Transactions just goes through all the uh, historic transactions we've had for this product. That's looking at everything from purchases uh, through to sales, through to uh, assemblies as well. So every transaction that we've had here uh, will be showing up in this list. We've also got uh, references. If you want to look at a transa transaction reference here, pulls them through. Costs, this is a, a record of how much our costs our cost has changed over time. Because we're running an average weighted cost in Unleashed, that cost is gonna change with each order and each uh, receipt of a purchase order. So you just see a bit of a running tally on each date, how much that product cost us here. You see the average cost was 14.50, jumped up to 16, down to 13, and right now it's at uh, $14.07. And you can see up here that reconciles what we currently got, $14.07. 
Now our last cost was $9.50, so the last order was $9.50, but our average weighted cost is $14.07. And as you can see here, that uh, we were sitting at $14.13, so those last two units that we ordered dropped our average weighted cost down uh, by just about five cents there. So if you wanna attach uh, any images, we can attach them in there, and then finally our integrations will sit along the, the end here. So I hope that was useful understanding how to set up and how to manage your products within Unleashed. So we looked through all the fields and also how we set up different prices for different suppliers and also our different sales prices based on price tiers for our customers. So I hope that was useful and I will see you in the next video.